Well, joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have uh, veteran journalist and commentator Fred Weir joining us from Moscow. Also, we have historian, journalist, and author Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos uh, joining us from the British capital, London. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, let's start off with Mr. Weir in Moscow. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the recent sanctions uh, implemented uh, upon Moscow? Well, these are targeted sanctions, that is, individuals, mainly in the security services, high, higher echelon government officials. Um, and they're mainly people who aren't allowed to have bank accounts in the West or who typically travel there. So uh, what R Russia is really responding to is not the physical pain, but the insult. The, the sense that these sanctions just keep escalating. It's been seven years now. They keep going on, ratcheting up every year for every reason. Uh, and and uh, I think the Russians are trying to find language, perhaps, gestures to uh, tell the, uh, the United States and the European Union as well uh, in different ways uh, that it's enough, that we, we really need to break this cycle. Marcus Papadopoulos, the Kremlin says uh, that the sanctions amount to interference in Russia's domestic affairs. Do you agree with that assessment and also give us your perspective on, uh, uh, on these recent sanctions? Well, the Alexei Navalny affair has to be seen in the context of superpower rivalry, specifically that Russia is again a superpower and America the dominant superpower in the world is attempting to undermine Russia's newfound status as a superpower. And the Americans are, are, are attempting to undermine Russia through a number of means, including the expansion of NATO to the western borders of the Russian Federation. We must remember that NATO is a dangerously criminal and violent military bloc. The Americans are also attempting to undermine Russia through the targeting of countries in the world which are strategic friends and allies to Moscow, including Cuba, Venezuela, uh, Syria and Iran. And the Americans are also attempting to undermine Russia through economic means, specifically sanctions. Now, the Americans care little for human rights. And the Americans in private know very well that Alexei Navalny's standing amongst the Russian public is negligible. The overwhelming majority of the Russian population do not just dislike Alexei Navalny, they loathe Alexei Navalny. They consider him to be an agent of the West. But for the Americans, they see Alexei Navalny as a useful tool in the demonization of Russia. They see Alexei Navalny as a pretext to introduce additional sanctions on Russia in the hope of uh, asphyxiating the Russian economy, which would bring about a collapse of Russia's newfound status as a superpower, leaving America, as it was during the 1990s and for most of the 2000s, as the only, as the only superpower in the world. If the Americans sincerely believe in support of Alexei Navalny that he was poisoned, then they should share their scientific and medical findings with the Russian authorities. But they won't do that, which begs the question, why will, not, why will they not share their findings with Russia? Interestingly, the British authorities never shared their medical and scientific findings with the Russians regarding what happened to the Scripples in Salisbury in 2018. And I would add this too. If the Americans and, of course, the British are genuinely committed to human rights, then they should really explain to the rest of the world why it is that they have such a close relationship with two countries in the world which flagrantly violate human rights on a daily basis and do not even respect 
the most basic concept of human rights. And those two countries, which the Americans and the British have very close relationships with, are Saudi Arabia and Israel. Mr. Weir, where does this uh, leave uh, the uh, relations between Brussels and Moscow? A lot is on the line uh, between the two when we look at, uh, at the gas projects. Uh, where do you think this is heading? Yeah, I think that, that this is, uh, it's really the EU that the, the Russians are concerned about. They've already, I think, thrown up their hands and given up on uh, resetting anything uh, with the new Biden administration or or re reversing that uh, downward spiral of the past several years. Uh, but the EU, uh, it it's, it's remains an important part of, of Russia's, you know, economic and, and geopolitical universe. Uh, it's a major trading partner still, and, and you do have the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, uh, which has come under uh, very intense pressure uh, under Trump. Uh, the, the idea was to kill it. And apparently Biden, the Biden administration, maybe some tweaking of their relations with the Germans, but they still want to end Nord Stream 2. Uh, and this is, this is um, I, think the, I think, the language you heard out of the Kremlin yesterday uh, about, and, and, and last week as well, about perhaps breaking off relations with the EU reflects uh, a loss of Russian patience with with this. The, uh, the Navalny affair is important. I'm a journalist who covers Russia and I do consider it an important news story uh, in its own right about Russian internal politics. I don't think it's just about geopolitics, but uh, it is being employed for uh, purposes, you know, to, uh, and, and I think the main single purpose between the United States and Europe right now is, of the Navalny affair is to get uh, the Germans to cancel Nord Stream 2. And uh, Mr. Papadopoulos, uh, Papadopoulos, very briefly, if you may, where do you think uh, uh, relations between Moscow and Brussels are, are headed and how much of a sway does Washington have in all of this? Well, of course, the European Union is a strategic, political, economic and military ally to the Americans. And the Americans exert tremendous influence within the European Union via Germany and France, but in particular, Germany. But nonetheless, as regards relations between the European Union and Russia, I find it almost inconceivable that there will be a severing of economic uh, ties between Brussels and Moscow. Why? Because the European Union is overwhelmingly reliant on Russia for natural gas. And uh, Russia uh, earns a tremendous amount of revenue year on year, year, on year through selling natural, uh, Russian natural gas to the European Union. So both sides need each other. And as regards to Nord Stream 2, we must remember, of course, that that is not an agreement between the European Union and Russia. That is an agreement between Germany and Russia. But uh, of course, Germany is the engine in the European Union. And that is why uh, Germany is very, very apprehensive about a further deterioration in economic relations uh, between the European Union and Russia. But if the European Union um, is an independent uh, organization as it purports to be, then, quite frankly, it right. should stand up to America and say we are not going to have eruption in relations with Russia. All right. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Mr. Fred, we are joining us from Moscow. Also, thanks to Marcus Papadopoulos joining us from the British capital, London. With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of the News Review. But do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV. Bye for now.